Hey guys, before we jump into today's video, I have really quickly some very exciting news. I am so excited to share that I am actually going to be launching a course and coaching program all about how to be a mindful eater. So a mindful eater is someone who can eat intuitively. They are in touch with their own innate cues to guide their eating choices so that they can eat well, but also in a way that's balanced and enjoyable. But not just that, I am going to be teaching all of my students the fundamentals of nutrition, all of the main principles that you want to know about food and a little bit of food science so that you are equipped to really understand nutrition and how to actually nourish your body so that you can kind of marry those two ideals together, eating healthy understanding what that actually means based on food and also eating intuitively so that you are fueling your body in the way that it needs. I'm going to be releasing a lot more information on this in the coming weeks, but I wanted to let you guys know that you can be one of the first to know when this course drops, more information about it, how you can get coached by me. I will put a link down below in the description box for my wait list. So if you join that, you will be the first to know when all of the new information about this course and then of course when the course itself actually comes out. I am so excited for this. I've been wanting to do this and offer this for years. You guys know that I am so passionate about this topic and I am just so pumped to be able to bring this information and my knowledge to you in just a much more hands-on way than I ever have before. So go right now, join my wait list so that you will be in the know, but without further ado, let's get into today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another what I eat in a day video. If you guys are new around here, my name is Becca. I'm a registered dietitian and I am very passionate about nutrition, but also equally as passionate about intuitive eating, not cutting out any kind of foods or food groups, not being on any kind of certain diet or meal plan, just truly eating what I want, what when I want, which might sound scary to you if you are used to dieting or if just in general, you are all about healthy eating because most people would think that they would just eat junk all day, but that is actually such a misconception about intuitive eating. You will see in this video or in any of my other what, night, what I eat in a day videos, I for the most part eat whole real foods. I cook most things from home. Um, it's pretty much from scratch. I'm all about healthy eating, but doing it in a way that's enjoyable and in a way that's balanced and in a way that really is very satisfying. So basically in these videos, I just take this camera around with me all day and just kind of share with you guys what I'm eating, what I'm cooking, what I'm making. Um, I really do strive to make things myself um, as much as possible using real food, whole ingredients. Um, but I am, you know, a busy mom <laughs> who works. So I do have to, you know, make things fairly simple and easy. And um, I am for simple meals. So you'll kind of see the balance, um, me kind of straddling those two worlds um, in these videos. So without further ado, if you guys want to see what I eat today, let's get started. All right, so starting with breakfast, I am having a classic, one of our favorites, which is oatmeal. Super easy to throw together in the morning and can be so healthy and pretty filling. So I am just starting by tossing in a bunch of old fashioned oats is typically what I go for. Um, I add in some water and then right away I add the raisins because if you let the raisins soak in the warm water for as long as possible, they get nice and plump and soft and juicy versus if you just throw them in at the end, I just like it better that way. So once the oats are really starting to cook, I'm just gonna add in a little bit of milk, also some chia seeds for extra fat and protein and omegas. And then something I have been doing recently whenever we have oatmeal is I've actually been adding a little bit of collagen powder for extra protein. I love having collagen on hand to add protein to things without having to add any taste. This is like my favorite form of protein powder and it really can mix into anything. Um, and we eat a lot of eggs in the morning <laughs> from our chickens because we just get so many. And I find that whenever we eat oatmeal, it just does not stick with us. I'm so much, or hungry so much sooner. And I know that that's probably true for, you know, Hayden and obviously for Matt too. So I really am trying to bump up 
protein in breakfast whenever we're not having something that is naturally super protein rich like eggs and it makes all the difference. I'm also adding in a little bit of cinnamon and then I recently picked up this maple sugar from um, a local farmer's market and I've kind of been just experimenting adding that to stuff, it's kind of fun. Um, so I'm just adding that in for a little bit of natural sweetness. You could totally do maple syrup too, both work. Um, typically I don't do that, but like I said, I've just been kind of experimenting with that. So then I'm just topping it off with some chopped walnuts as well for some crunch. And also that's adding more protein to this breakfast, which is just going to help it be more filling because the more fat and protein we add in there, that's just going to increase the satiety, meaning the longer that food is just going to stick with us and keep us feeling full. Okay, and then for lunch, um, I'm kind of making like a little bit of a leftover situation. So what I mean by that is first, I'm just taking this flatbread. Um, these are actually homemade. I made those for dinner um, a couple of nights before this. They're just like einkorn flatbreads. They're super easy to make. The dough is super easy. And then you do literally just like create a flatbread in your hand, the shape of it, pop it in a skillet on each side to cook, it's super easy. So I'm just gonna make kind of like an open face flatbread sandwich. Um, I'm adding on some hummus first thing, and then I'm gonna add some avocado, which is pretty much straight fat, so filling. I usually add avocado um, to my lunch because it's just an easy way to make a meal really satisfying and filling. Um, and then I'm gonna top it off with some fresh tomato. These are the last tomatoes from our summer garden. Oh my gosh, they are so, so good. I'm not like the biggest tomato person, but homegrown tomatoes are a whole nother ball game. Oh my goodness. So I'm just slicing them really thin because that's how I like them. And I'm just gonna top this. It's just kind of like a veggie, flatbread sandwich. Kind of a random combination, but it was actually really delicious. And then I'm just topping it off with a little bit of sea salt. Then I also cooked up um, a couple hard boiled eggs. These are just eggs from our chickens. So I like to actually do more like a medium boiled egg. I don't like when the yolk is all the way cooked through. So what I do is I put some water on the stove. I put the eggs in right away before the water's heating up. I let them sit in there while the water comes to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, let them cook for about six to seven more minutes and then immediately take them out and pop them in some ice water. They will be perfect medium boiled eggs and they are so, so good. The yolk is like kind of creamy, so delicious. And then I'm just topping them off with a little bit of salt and pepper. I also paired this with a little bit of leftover veggie soup that I had. I was just super hungry this day and we had this in the fridge, so I just heated up this to go along with my lunch as well. Okay, so after lunch, I just had a hankering for something sweet. I love dark chocolate. Um, I get this one from Trader Joe's and it's just so good. I always have um, one of those in our pantry. So now moving on to dinner, talk about a classic. This is one of my all time favorite OG recipes. If you've been following me for a long time, you probably know what I'm about to say. I am making chili. <laughs> we love chili. It's such an easy dinner to make. Again, it's very protein rich. It's very filling. And when it starts to get chilly out this time of year, this is just what I want. Years ago, this was like the one of like the few from scratch recipes that I knew how to make and I made it nonstop. When Matt and I like first got married and we lived together, I made it all the time. Now I have expanded in my cooking ability since then, so I don't make it as much, which is probably a good thing, but um, we still do love this recipe. It's one of my favorites and I always go back to it. So I basically just chop up some fresh green peppers. These are actually from our garden, which is just so satisfying. They're so delicious. We have had an amazing year for green peppers. We, we are like still getting green peppers. It's crazy. So um, I once I chop those up, I just dice them up and then I'm also going to dice up um, like a medium sized onion as well. And this is how I dice an onion. This is like my little trick that I always do. It makes it super fast. And also they all come out pretty evenly sized. 
I'm also going to um, chop up a little bit of garlic too. I'm just taking a few cloves of garlic. I'm actually going to um, attempt to grow my own garlic this year and like any day now I'm gonna try and plant a bunch of cloves in our um, beds outside and just let them sit there all winter and spring and see if we have garlic in the spring because that would be super fun. I use garlic pretty much every night when I cook. It's such a great way to season your food and garlic actually has a lot of um, interesting health properties to it, especially as far as like antioxidants and stuff. So it's pretty cool to add into your dishes, um, not just for flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead and add um, the peppers, the onions and the garlic and um, with a little bit of avocado oil in my Dutch oven. You can use any stock pot or big pot that you have. And I'm just gonna start to saute those until they start to get a little bit of so a little bit soft and um, very fragrant. And once I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and add in some ground turkey. You can use any kind of meat you want. You could technically even skip the meat and just do all beans, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, and I'm just going to cook up that ground turkey and just chop it all up so um, it combines really well with the peppers and the onions. So then I'm just gonna add in, this is 28 ounces of diced tomatoes. I just get them plain um, with like no salt added so I can do all the seasoning myself. And then I'm also gonna add in just one small can of tomato paste and a half a cup of water. So this makes like the base of the chili. And then all we're gonna do is add in a bunch of seasonings and then also some beans as well. So I'm just gonna mix this all together until it gets combined. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add the beans. I actually really like using white beans in my chili, um, specifically cannellini beans. But you can do whatever you want. You can do like classic chili beans, which is like a mixture. Um, but I just really like using white beans in my chili. Um, and then as far as spices, I do oregano, I do chili powder, I do paprika, I do lots and lots of cumin, um, garlic powder, salt and pepper. Um, I think that's everything that I use. And I totally eyeball this, but I just you know do whatever feels right, and I always go heavy on the cumin. And once I have all of my spices in there I will just give this a stir and then pop the lid on to let it simmer you want to let it simmer for at least 20 minutes just to help all of those flavors melt together but the longer you can do this the better this day I actually made this chili I made it kind of like in the afternoon and then I just put my oven or my stove top on like the lowest possible setting and I just let it sit there for the whole afternoon and oh my gosh gosh it was so good so the longer you let it simmer the better, but at least do 20 minutes. So to go with this, I decided to make some cornbread. Um, this is one of Shay Elliott's cookbooks. I can link it down below. And it's just like a healthier einkorn cornbread and it's so delicious. The only thing I do is I add a little bit more maple syrup than what her recipe calls for. So I'm just adding in um, the uh, actual corn um, and then um, I'm gonna add in the einkorn flour. I've showed this so many times. This is one of my favorite flours to use. It's like the least, um, one of the only grains remaining that hasn't been like hybridized and really messed with. And it has higher protein, it has lower gluten, um, and it's also pretty rich in like beta carotene. That's why it has kind of like a yellowish color, which is a really powerful um, antioxidant. So I'm also just adding in the rest of the ingredients. So we've got baking powder and salt and all of those fun things. So you just add all of the dry ingredients together um, and then we can just mix those up and then we'll move on to the wet ingredients. Okay, so for wet ingredients, we are doing milk, um, an egg, and I'm just gonna mix all of this together. A little bit of maple syrup, like I said, I think her recipe calls for one tablespoon or maybe it's two and I prefer to add three. I just like it a little bit more sweet. And then also some butter, of course. Um, I prefer to use grass-fed butter um, because it's just gonna be higher in omegas and it's typically more nutrient dense. So we're just gonna mix all these ingredients together and then we basically just throw it in a grease pan and stick it in the oven. It's super easy to make. I love pairing with if we're having chili or if we're having soup. Um, a lot of the times that's all I'll make and that we'll just stick it in a bowl and that's what we're having for dinner because that's all I could you know do that day and that's perfectly fine. But my favorite is if I have a little bit of extra time or a little bit of extra energy, I love to bake some kind of bread to go along with that. So like cornbread's super easy. I mean you literally just toss all the ingredients together. You don't have to do any 
there's no rise time, there's no kneading, it's just plop it into a pan and you're good to go. And it's just such a good addition to chili. But you know, you can also bake a fresh loaf of bread. You can really just go for it and it just makes the meal so much more cozy and hearty and from like a culinary, I guess, perspective, it just makes it, really heightens the meal. But like I said, if it's, sometimes I'm just literally making soup and we're having soup in a bowl and that's it and that's fine. Um, but some days if you have a little extra energy, it's kind of nice to do something extra special. So just gonna pop that in the oven for about 20 minutes and then it comes out and it just has this nice golden brown color on the edges and it's just warm and sweet and delicious. And then lastly, I wanted another little something sweet. These cookies are so good. You've probably seen them at your grocery store. You can get a big box at Costco, just a heads up, but they are just these like light, crispy little chocolate chip cookies and they're so good. Okay, you guys, so that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I absolutely would love for you guys to subscribe to my channel if you are new and you have yet to subscribe. I would also love for you to follow me over on my Instagram. I'm just at Becca Bristow. You can kind of get a peek into my daily life, the behind the scenes and just what we're up to. But thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.